Kids are fun here. I am learning about my culture. Since 1927, St. Joseph's Indian School has provided children the education, health care, and support they need to succeed. To help give our kids brighter futures, learn more at stjo.org today. 1033 The Goat. Yeah, that's the one. K277 TQ Lafayette, 1420 KPEL Lafayette. The rumors are true. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Dave Schultz and Sports Chat are back. I'm back, baby! I'm back! One change, though. I'm sorry, that deal's now off the table. What? We live in a different world than we did just 30 seconds ago. Instead of waking you up, he's taking you home from work. Hey, Dad, you want to have a catch? I'd like that. Talking Cajuns, Tigers, Saints, all of it. I am the father. Buckle up, Acadiana. I feel the need. The need for speed. Ow! It's time for Sports Chat with Dave Schultz on 1033 The Goat. Welcome back to hour number three of a Thursday afternoon sports chat. Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton on 103.3 The Goat. We've previewed the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers. We've talked UL Raging Cajuns. We just finished up with the Carolina Panthers. Let's talk a little Tampa Bay Buccaneers with our guy Zach Blobner from WDAE in Tampa Bay, co-host of the J&Z show uh, middays on WDAE. Why, why does he get top billing? Is that based on last name? You're, you're using his first name and your, well, I guess your first name. Why do you do last names? You get top billing. Even better, it's J and Z, but his name is J, J-A-Y. And I'm like, your name is literally the letter. Why is Z just Z and not Zach? Uh, we, we joke about it quite a bit, but, <laughs> you know, people get paid bigger bucks to, to do the branding of those types of things. So we'll just, we'll go with it. I feel like Mamola had his hands all over the branding. It's more about yep. branding and giving you a bit. You guys will just have this bit the whole time you're on the show together. Yeah, we've actually used it. It's great for guests because they think DJZ is the one that they're talking to, and then they get us, and they're like, what the hell? But it works. Right, right. Sure, I'll come on the show. Uh, what's, what are we, You're talking Tampa Bay Rays? I thought we were talking something else. Uh, all right, how does uh, – so far, reports out of camp, uh, you know, the mini camps and camp so far that I've heard that the quarterbacks have been slightly off. What uh, What can you tell us firsthand? Yeah, I think there's a you know learning curve there for really everybody on offense, right? Start with the fact that it's a new offensive coordinator, Dave Canales, who is taking over the play calling and everything, comes down from Seattle and in place of Byron Leftwich, who was there for the Super Bowl run in the Bruce Arians era and year one of Todd Bowles as the head coach. So Dave Canales now in charge, a guy who's never been an offensive coordinator, never play called in the NFL. So he's got a learning curve. Then you got two quarterbacks, one of which is Baker Mayfield coming aboard and learning his system. So there's a learning curve there. Kyle Trask, who's been in the league for a couple years, but he's thrown nine passes as an NFL quarterback in real season action. And it was at the end of last year, again, in Byron Lefwich's system. So he's got to learn in multiple ways, uh, not just the new system, but how to be an NFL quarterback. And then you have the rest of the offense trying to figure out the new system and their new quarterbacks. So a lot of education, a lot of learning, um, on the field at camp. And you're certainly seeing that, I think a little bit, ironically, it seems like the curve has been a little bit harder for Baker Mayfield. The first week, uh, week or so of practice here, Kyle Trask has looked better through the first week plus, And that's a little surprising. I think many of us expected just based on the chats we've had here locally with coaches uh, and GMs and everybody around the Bucks organization that, it was going to be Baker's job to lose and that Kyle would really have to outshine him to even have a shot at it. That being said, so far it's been the case where Kyle has outshined Baker. And Mayfield talked to us today. He even admitted as much that he's had a couple mm. of bad days of practice that he's trying to get on track. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. It's been more of a competition than I anticipated. Dave. 
I mean, certainly, you know, Baker Mayfield, I guess, a more celebrated, right? Heisman Trophy winner, yeah. I guess, right? Number one pick. Yeah. Um, you know, Kyle Trask had one good season. He's a movie. I don't know why you have. Do you have the movie rights to Kyle Trask? Because that's a movie waiting to happen. Um, you I know, do. Not, not I've, get, I've locked him up. Yes, you absolutely <laughs> should. Um, because it will be a movie one day. Uh, but Kyle Trask was in the Tampa Bay system. Shouldn't he, shouldn't he be ahead of Baker? Or is it just football being football and Baker hasn't quite caught on yet? So, in theory, I agree with you. And I think, to that point, the fact that he isn't the favorite or wasn't to start training camp was kind of a sign to us that, like, okay, well, they really must not have a lot of faith in Kyle to win the job or to be a starting quarterback in this league because, yeah, you would think the fact that he spent some time around head coach Todd Bowles, been in Tampa Bay, was drafted by him, uh, knows Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, even though he didn't necessarily have a lot of reps with them, like, he knows those guys, the offensive line guys. Uh, Rashad White, the last year's rookie running back, that's now the lead guy in year two in that backfield. So the fact that like there wasn't really an edge given to Kyle, despite all of those things, made us believe that, okay, well, they must really think that Baker's probably going to win this job and not Kyle. I think the GM, Jason Light, is probably leaning towards Kyle. I think the head coach, Todd Bowles, probably is more inclined to start a guy like Baker Mayfield because of his veteran experience in the league. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. I, I've been surprised, again, uh, with Kyle and with this competition so far. And I mean, at the end of the day, if one guy looks significantly better than the other, you have to start him regardless of who that is. So how much pressure is, is on, you know, the team with no Brady this year? <sighs> like none. I, no. I think a lot of people are expecting this team to be picking more so in the top five than grabbing a playoff spot this year. But look, the first month of the season should be really interesting because if they find a way to, go three and one, right. Or at least look good and be two and two. I think faith will travel into the bye week. And then they have the, their fifth game of the season is against the lions at home when they'll have the cream sickles on. I think you can have the fan base at least on board uh, after the first month, if that's the case. But if you're thinking ahead and you're really trying to be honest with yourself, most of the expectation uh, is probably that this team is going to be towards the bottom of it all. Um, that being said, we, here in Tampa Bay, do what everybody's doing in New Orleans, in Charlotte, in Atlanta, looking at the NFC South, thinking, hey, it's up for grabs. Let's go out and get it. Talking to Zach Blobner, a co-host of JNZ Middays WDAE in uh, Tampa Bay. Uh, all right, so they do have some positions, right? I mean, they have a pretty good receiving core. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you saw this, O.J. Howard is available, just in case. <laughs> Again. Right. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, it's so funny. OJ, it just looks like such a good physical specimen that you're like, how could he not be a great NFL player? But here we are. Uh, he's out there looking for a gig. I actually like the tight end group. Listen, anytime you have a chance to cover a guy like Rob Gronkowski there for a couple of seasons, it's always going to be a downgrade. And last year he wasn't around and we saw that. But the rookie Kate Otten from last season is now going to be your lead guy this year. I like him a lot. I don't know if he'll be a star this season. But I think he has star potential in general uh, in his uh, rookie contract and in the NFL in general. Uh, Coe Keith is a great gadget guy, more of a fullback, but they use him as a tight end and gives you a different element. They added Payne Durham in this year's draft. He's just a big touchdown catching machine in terms of his body type. Um, but he's, you know, tight end three. So you have that luxury to not need him to necessarily thrust in right away. I like the young class. I think Kate Otten's going to be really good. Maybe not this year, but down the road. Back to the offense. So did they tweak it to, to what Baker and Kyle can do, or are they just run the same thing that Brady did last year? Yeah, no, it's going to be so different. I mean, this oh. team could not rush the ball to save their life. Um, they're going to run more this year, just bluntly put. I think they're going to focus more on some of the short passing and, and short game. I don't think they're going to take as many shots. I don't think they're going to take as many risks, regardless of if it's Kyle or Baker. And then Brady obviously has this like magic of being able to sidestep uh, rushers right. in the pocket. Right. But I think Kyle, we've seen him break some runs like every day at practice. And uh, Baker loves to bootleg to the left and right. So I think you're not going to get like Lamar Jackson style or Justin Fields on the offense with rushing quarterbacks. But I think that the QBs are going to be a lot more on the move. And I think you're going to see a lot more of the rushing attack this year on the Bucks offense. Talking to Zach Bobner, WDAE midday host with uh, Jay, uh, with Jay and he's Z. What, um, what about defensively? How are they looking defensively? 
Yeah, I like the defense. I mean, that's going to be their bread and butter. Todd Bowles, a defensive-minded coach, a lot of returning talent on that side of the ball, including cornerbacks Carlton Davis, who got a big deal two years ago. Jamel Dean, this past offseason, people expected him to go somewhere and become CB1 on a different squad, but he re-signed, took a hometown discount. So feel really good about those two guys. Antoine Winfield Jr., his natural position back there in the safety, has high expectations. He's been great so far. Had some injuries last year that held him back, but you know we're expecting big things from him this season. Opposite him will be Ryan Neal, a guy who comes down from Seattle and ranked very high on the PFF grades uh, in terms of last season that really burst onto the scene. Seahawks just didn't have the money to pay to keep him around. Up the middle, you'll have Devin White, Levante, David. I don't know about 2024, but they're back together at least this season, and they're one of the better linebacker duos in the league. Uh, question marks on the pass rush, right? Shaq Barrett, obviously coming off of an Achilles injury that ended his season last year, is your number one guy. Joe Tryon and Troyanka kind of has O.J. Howard syndrome, looks the part or waiting for him to kind of fill the shoes, though, of what his body is out there. And then Vita Vey is going to be great up the middle. The big guy, we'll see if he can get some help, though. They added a guy like Greg Gaines from the Rams. Nobody knows his name. He hasn't really looked great in practice. Uh, Kalijah Kansi, the first-round pick, has looked great in practice, but he got banged up, and we don't even know if he'll be available for week one now. So I think the pass rush is probably the biggest question mark, um, but there's certainly talent on that defensive line and got to love what they're doing in the second and third level there. Back to the offense. Any more offensive linemen from the Hobart? University? <laughs> we'll take any more you want to send down yeah. this way from Hobart. Uh, Cody Mock obviously comes down from North Dakota. Oh. And he, he looks every bit of Ryan Jensen. He's missing teeth. He's got the red long hair. He's just a guy that just loves football. And, and his number is 69. He picked that. So that tells you everything <laughs> you need to know. He's a fun guy to cover. Uh, the small school linemen, they just they have a home in Tampa Bay. Have you had him on the show yet? Because that's going to be a drop. And he, he's just so quotable. <laughs> Yeah, we, we haven't had him one-on-one -on -one yet. We've been working on uh, trying to get him there. But he's he's been a joy to cover so far. And, again, you know, you got him next to another guy that looks like that, Ryan Jensen. It's just a lot of fun to watch. And then you got the actual All-Pro and Tristan Warps too, which doesn't hurt. What side of the line is he on? Is he switching sides? Did I hear that? He did. He Yeah, he jumped from the right side to the left side. Oh. Um, he's looked okay, though. He's looked very fluid. I mean, obviously, they're not in live game action yet, but – I mean, I haven't, at least from my eyes, seen him miss a beat in terms of flipping from that side to the other. Uh, Matt Filer is a free agent they brought in, spent a lot of his career in Pittsburgh. I think he was with the Chargers last year. I don't quite remember, but he uh, he's going to slot right in there next to Warfs and in between Jensen. Uh, Cody Malk will probably get the start there, the rookie out of North Dakota. And then on the other side of him, Luke Gedeke, who was a guy drafted last year and underperformed, but sliding to a new position too. They think he'll be a lot more comfortable on the right side. Zach Blobner, WDAE, co-host JNZ, Middays, w, uh, Middays in Tampa. Where are your concerns? Well, I mean, as much as I like Cody Malk, um, that right side of the offensive line is one that I'm kind of worried about. Luke Gedeke, again, didn't look good last year. We'll see if the new side of the line benefits him. And anytime you have a rookie starting on the O-line, it's always a concern. So definitely there. Love Mike Evans and Chris Godwin in terms of the top two receivers. I'm worried about Russell Gage's durability as wide receiver three. And then just in general, the depth. I've seen some flashes from some wide receivers in that group, but I don't know if any of those guys will be able to step up uh, on game day on the NFL Sundays. So those are some big ones. And then again, that pass rush on defense is a big question mark for me. Um, Vita Vea is a great player, but he's usually at his best when he has another dominant force alongside him, like a key mix last year and Dominican to the few years prior he doesn't have that this year. So he's really going to have to spread his wings even more than he already has. And then even if Shaq Barrett, you know, kind of gets back to form and is a threat again, can he get some help on the other side of the line from that pass rush uh, on the other edge? I just, I don't have a ton of confidence in that yet. So those are some of the bigger question marks. And all of this we're talking about, there is a kicking competition hmm. with uh, Chase McLaughlin and, um, Rodrigo Blankenship, the former, uh, he wears the glasses, went to Georgia. He was an in indie there for a while. Sure. He's a more known commodity. So those guys are pretty even right now. But there is a, anytime there's a kicking competition, you worry if the guy that wins it will be able to get him through the uprights uh, come the regular season. Zach Bobner, formerly a morning show producer, now doing the middays. You like sleeping in a little bit? It's nice. Uh, <laughs> I like honestly having the full day in front of me, though. I've had to readjust a lot. But uh, I'm not going to complain. That extra hour or two I'm getting to sleep now is is well worth it. I just never got used to it, man. I never got you. You're just perpetually exhausted. 
Yeah, it's. I took more naps. I'll say that. I don't have I, a problem. I, I take really naps. Ever now. Yeah. Yeah. Take a power nap. Set the alarm for an hour and a half, but if I go 45 minutes, that's good enough. Yeah, I would do that as well. Yeah, I'm with you. And running is easier in the morning, too. I don't have to try to run after work now. I know oh. you like to get out there, too, so that's that's definitely helpful. Back in the day, I ran 3.30 in the morning. Uh, see, I did that every once in a while, but it's hard to do that consistently, man. That just puts you even more behind the eight ball. Yeah, it just got me through the show. I needed I needed to work out before the show. Got me through the show. He is at, yeah. He's at, any good bourbon lately. Uh, you know, I was wondering. I've, I've been doing a lot of the High West uh, oh. bourbons. Um, yeah, I had a co- uh, they had a rye come out that I tried. Um, I need to switch it up, though. I was just thinking that since I knew I was going to join you today. I was like, I got to try some new bourbons. I'm not going to have any good info for them. So hopefully next time I'll have a couple under my belt that I haven't talked to you about yet. I did have a Weller single barrel here in town and <laughs> uh, Blanton's Gold. Those The Blanton's Gold was really good. Pricey. How's the gold? The gold was yeah, good. Yeah, Blanton's is good, though. Yeah. I haven't had their gold. I imagine it's amazing just like this it was song. really good uh at sunbelt media days they wanted to charge me 45 dollars for a, a, sh- a drink of a weller's 12 i passed <laughs> the whole bottle is 45 bucks <laughs> right yeah yeah that's if, if, you can find if it. i've ever heard of it <laughs> uh exactly uh he is zach blobner co-host of j and z middays in tampa bay wda appreciate it zach we'll catch up again soon hey. sounds good brother i'll talk to you guys soon take care uh, all right yeah, not bad. Well, had a Weller single barrel. It's the okay. orange label. Okay, that's at the tap room. A poor had Blanton's Gold. Oh, how was that? It was really good. Blanton's Gold was thirty three bucks. I feel like that's your that's your like favorite. Or I've never least, had it oh, before. Oh, okay. I've had Blanton's before. I've gotcha. never had Blanton's Gold before. Oh, okay, that was good. That okay. was good. Um, Weller was okay. Maybe, but the best part about that it was only fifteen bucks. The, the bartender goes, I've, I've gotten that reaction again because I thought she said like 50. She's like, is that too expensive? Is that, uh, am too I not much? charging enough? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, that's, that's fine. It's too expensive. <laughs> right? That's fine. Because uh, again, the maker's mark and diet geez, it, in New Orleans was 14 bucks. Oh, okay. That's pricey. The hotel wanted $45 for one drink of Weller 12. Ooh. If you can find the bottle for retail, that's what the bottle costs, like 45, 50 bucks. Unfortunately, you can't find the bottle. It costs like $300. Mm. That's the problem there. All right, let's take a timeout. We'll reset. Any conference realignment yet? No, nothing yet. Nothing yet. It's coming. The same thing with the Camara suspension. That's coming, too. Supposed to yeah, he yesterday. tweeted out Atlanta today. Wait, what? He, Camara, tweeted, tweeted out, out Atlanta. The word Atlanta? Yeah. So does that mean that's how long? Let's see. Saints. Let's see, does that mean when he's coming back? When's the first Atlanta game? Um, whoa, that's not until November 26th. I hope he's, he's not suspended that. No, yeah, no, 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 Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, maybe he's going there. Maybe he's going there today. Yeah, maybe he's going to hang out. Yeah. All right, let's take a time out. Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton, 1033 to go. Mess with a goat. <laughs> You'll get the horns, then the butt. Because <laughs> that's what goats do. 1033, the goat. If you've been injured, it doesn't matter if you were hit by a big truck, a smart car, or anything in between. I'm Spencer Callahan. I'd like to help. Spencer Callahan is the one to see. Call 4652323. LA21-12673. Primary offices in Baton Rouge. Deodorant you use on your butt? You heard that right. I'm Dr. Shannon Klingman, founder of Lumi Whole Body Deodorant. It's time to summer proof your body odor. Lumi's formula works everywhere. Pits, under boobs, and yep, butts too. All those places that naturally tend to get a little bit stinky when the weather gets hot. Lumi's clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours. That's three whole days of fresh fun in the sun. As an OBGYN, I met thousands of women looking for a better way to control odor below the belt. So I created Lumi, a pH-optimized aluminum-free deodorant that actually works, with over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. Ready for your freshest summer ever? Head to lumideodorant.com to get started. There's a special offer for listeners. Use code 23 and get an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack that comes with a free product of your choice and ships free with code 23. 
L-U-M-E deodorant.com code 23 for an extra $5 off a Lumi starter pack. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com code 23. Staples presents a lesson in back to school savings. Your local Staples now accepts Amazon returns. So when you return your Amazon order at Staples, you receive a coupon for $10 off your next $30 Staples purchase. So you can save even more on top of huge back to school deals. Like right now, two pocket poly folders and Staples eight count number two pencil are each just 50 cents. Staples gives you more ways to save even more. 50 cent offers and 826. Pricing and limits may vary in store and online. Amazon return offer in store only. Exclusion supply. And we're live here outside the Perez family home just waiting for the... And there they go. Almost on time this morning. Mom is coming out the front door strong with a double arm kid carry. Looks like dad has the bags. Daughter is bringing up the rear. But the diaper bag wasn't closed. Diapers and toys are everywhere. Ooh, but mom has just nailed the perfect car seat buckle for the toddler. And now the eldest daughter, who looks to be about 9 or 10, has secured herself in the booster seat. Dad zips the bag closed, and they're off. Ah, but looks like mom doesn't realize her coffee cup is still on the roof of the car. And there it goes. Oh, that's a shame. That mug was a fam favorite. Don't sweat the small stuff. Just nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are buckled correctly in the right seat for their age and size. Learn more at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Every second counts in a poison emergency. That's why Poison Help is standing by 24-7 to provide free assistance in over 100 languages. Save Poison Help as a contact in your phone today. Poison Help. 1-800-222-1222. 1-800-222-1222. Thirsty for intelligent sports talk? Sounds like you need a little go to Ray. 1033 The Goat. The greatest sports talk of all time. All right, Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton on a Thursday afternoon sports chat, 103.3 The Goat. Uh, Jason Shear, a senior editor, publisher of WildcatAuthority.com. He was actually on the call with 24-7's Brandon Marcello. Uh, Jason says he sees articles about Arizona schools waiting for Oregon and Washington, and it sounds like it could be a thing. But how long are they supposed to wait if Apple is pulling their deal and the Big Ten isn't giving anybody an answer tonight? Mm. It's a lot of people contradicting themselves right now. Yeah, it doesn't uh, sound good. I mean, we're waiting basically for the fall of the Pac-12. And, and it, it sounds like it's up to Arizona. He's saying it's up to Oregon, Washington, but it sounds like it's up to Arizona or Arizona State. Right now, it doesn't feel like one or two schools want to be the, the culprits of bringing down Arizona, Arizona State. Yeah. But let's be honest, that was USC and UCLA. Facts. Okay, that's that's where this started. They um, began all of this. Well, that's where, that's where, that's the tipping point. It started when they screwed up the network. We've talked about oh, that. Oh, yeah, true. All right, they didn't go into, into business with Fox or ESPN. That's how the SEC network is so successful. That's how the Big Ten network is so successful. Uh, eventually... You know, MLB Network became that successful. The NFL Network became mm-hmm. that successful. So these places had examples of how to succeed. Of how to succeed. And even even not using their example, right? Even doing something different. Mm-hmm. They could see what, what they had wasn't working. True. When in doing the same thing over and over yes. with expecting so different it, results we, is insanity. Say we're expecting, just say 100, right? And we're getting like 35 out of that. Mm-hmm. Well, if we went into bed with Fox or ESPN, we could get up to 75. It may not be 100, but, but we're getting some. We're yeah. getting more, or else it's 50 50, or however split they want to do it. You know, you'd get more, and then you get the distribution, and then that would become bigger. True. True, 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 and true. And so they, they, that, the, the Pac 12 messed this up a good decade ago. How long? Let's see here. Can we find that out? Is that on? You think that's on? Uh, that might be on the. On Wikipedia? Yeah. Let's see. Pac 12 network. Wikipedia. I want to see when this started. Because I think it started in 2011 or something along those lines. Launched August 15th, 2012. So I was still in the keys. I probably have an email from it. All right. Let's see here. Announced on July 27th, 2011 and launched about a year later on the 
August 15th, 2012, the national network was available to at least 48 million paid television households in the United States. While the regional networks are available in all providers within their respective Pac-12 regional territory, is a third sports network to devote uh, devoted to a specific college conference, Big Ten and the Mountain West Sports Network. And the first to be owned by a conference outright without support from outside companies. Oops. Fox Entertainment Group owns 49% of the Big Ten Network. Yeah, yeesh. There you go. Yeesh, yeesh, yeesh. Not great. Not great. Not great. <laughs> why, would I, why wouldn't you, after the first year, not getting what you wanted... Try something new. Just go, hey, who wants to buy it? We yeah. got half, right? No, I agree. Think how much money the Big Ten is making. Let's see. Let's do that. Big Ten payouts. Isn't it like $60 million? Yeah. Big Ten I- Network payouts. How much are they making? Yeah. I'll, I'll see how much the SEC is making. Annual well. payouts... By the conference to Big Ten schools through the length of those deals are projected to reach over $60 million in just television revenue. Total conference payouts could reach $90 million. Ooh. Jeez. So for the SEC, the conference announced that it makes $721 million in total revenue. This was in 2021-2022. It was divided amongst the 14 universities for $50 million apiece. And that was in 2021-2022. Right. And now so, we got a new deal. Going. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could just just really, really poor management by the Pac-12, all right? Really poor management. All right, let's take a time out. Two more segments to go. Could talk a little baseball. See how Linden's Philly, <laughs> Phillies are doing, doing well, man. <laughs> Phillies are killing it. <laughs> uh, oh, we can also talk about, uh, I, we should do this. The quarterbacks who turned down. Oh, yeah, we need to do that. Yeah. We'll do that next. We'll do that next. Mm-hmm. All right. Dave Schultz, Lynn and Burton. Lynn and talking about the quarterbacks who turned down Peyton the Manning quarterback Sam. show on Netflix. Like, Netflix. Mm-hmm. All right. Back after this. 103.3 The Goat. It's a good thing goats have four stomachs. Otherwise, there's no way we could swallow some of these takes. Hey, Goat, what's going on out there? 103.3 The Goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. Get going and get it done. Get going and get it done. Correct, done. Personal injury, done. Workers' comp, done. Truck wrecks, done. Get going and get it done. Attorney Gordon McCurdy, Lafayette, LA 22 13634. Get Gordon! We are the NFHS. That stands for the National Federation of State High School Associations. But really, what we stand for, together with the LHSAA, are the 110,000 high school sports students in Louisiana. And so we stand. We stand for the runners, soccer, and basketball players. We stand for their coaches, administrators, and officials. We stand for the swimmers, football players, and wrestlers. We stand for the golfers, softball, and volleyball players. We stand as the national leader and advocate for high school athletics and all who participate in them and make them possible. Because it is our purpose to ensure that high school students get to play, perform, and compete together learn more about who we are and what we stand for, visit nfhs.org. The mission of Paralyzed Veterans of America is clear. Accessibility. Veterans who have served and sacrificed the best of themselves deserve access to the best our country has to offer. Access to meaningful employment. Access to the veterans' benefits they've earned. Accessible homes and vehicles. And access to every part of their communities. With PVA staff working inside VA hospitals, no other veterans organization has provided more real-time, ongoing support for paralyzed veterans and their families. PVA is proud to serve veterans across all branches, all generations, and all conflicts. Our nation's heroes fought for your independence. 
Join PVA in fighting for theirs at pva.org. What I know about courage, I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just gotta hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. <laughs> no, you hold my hand. Here we go. <laughs> Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. Pardon us while we butt in with a little common sense. One zero three three, the goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. Dave Schultz, Lyndon Burton, back on a Thursday afternoon sports chat, 103.3 The Go. A tequila right. Thursday. Tequila Thursday. There you go. <laughs> we got some. Yeah, we do. If, we there's, do. A, if there's still some in the, in the bottom there. There is, yeah. Uh, that'll help out the back. We never thought about that helping true. out the back. True, true, we true, true, done true, that. true, true, uh, All right, so quarterbacks in the quarterback show, Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, mm-hmm. and Marcus Mariota. Yep. All right, so those are three guys at different stages of their career, right? One is... The best. At the start, right? yeah, the peak. And one's pretty good. This one's the, pretty good trying to one, make that next step. Right, one's pretty good, right? Uh, and then one's just trying to hang on. A highly yeah. rated prospect that hasn't quite made it. Mm-hmm. And had to deal with injuries. And during the year, got demoted and kind of quit. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty All much. Right. So, All right, so, so who has decided not to be on it next so year? So these are the quarterbacks that rejected it. And to me, this falls under... The mid tier to there are some high tier guys just, in just, here. We'll just go gotcha. over the list. You got the uh, Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Tua, Dak Prescott, Sam Howell, and Matt Stafford. Why Sam Howell will turn it down? I do not know. He should have like that right. to me is that's the one that I think would have been perfect to replace the Mariota thing because I don't want to see a quarterback falling off. I want to see, like, a young guy on the come up. What's going to be his team? Exactly. Year, yeah, all right. Like, they believe in Sam And why would Howell Justin Fields do it? Why would Justin Fields and Jalen not want to do it? Or Lamar? Well, Lamar said he feels that it would distract him from his play. Same thing that, that him and Jalen basically said the same thing. How did it affect Patrick Mahomes? He won a Super Bowl. <laughs> and I think Dak Prescott, for him... I don't think he wants more media pressure than he already has. With yeah, the but he wouldn't be able to say that. No, I agree with you. I don't think they should have turned. Like, to me, I don't think Dak should have turned it down. I To me. Dak would be Kirk Cousins in this, exactly, in this thing. Exactly. Yeah. And Josh Allen says he hasn't. Uh, actually, we have his response here. Because it just he talked about it in the Bills uh, right. press conference four hours ago. Okay. So I, I don't know what he said, but we'll find uh, out right uh, now. I haven't watched it yet. I know I, I talked to Pat a little bit about it, um, and I think it's a really cool concept. Um, I think that to have everything documented, especially as a quarterback, uh, is very cool. I mean, you look at some of the, the documentaries that have come out in the past, and you talk about the Jordan documentary. Um, but just to have that documented, especially uh, if you can you can win and win at a high level and, and continue to, to – be a, a successful quarterback in this league to have that documented I think is super special um, but at the same time I, I don't want any outside distractions I don't want any unnecessary uh, distractions for, for myself or this team and I'm not saying that would be um, uh, I'm a little undecided on whether I, I would want to do it or not I go back and forth sometimes in my mind but as of right now I'm just trying to trying to be the best quarterback for this team I so- sounds like he thinks it would be a distraction. And you want to know yeah. why? Yeah, yeah. I think it has to do with what me and you discussed a couple weeks ago, his beef with Stefan Diggs over the cheating stuff he had going on with his girlfriend distraction type situation. Because he's been through distracting stuff for that team. Oh. Yeah, you remember that whole scandal? Well, now he's got a girlfriend. Well, yeah, he's dating Haley Steinfeld now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pitch perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Pitch or- perfect two and three. Kate uh, Kate Bishop from the Hawkeye series. She's now a superhero. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but I, I would love to see, like, imagine if season two was Josh Allen and Joe Burrow. That would be better than season one. Yeah. Because Peter King already confirmed Joe's doing season two. Joe is doing yeah. season two. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. And I think that's awesome because out of all the other quarterbacks, 
I think he's league. like. I think he is. It's he's perfect for it. I think, He's like the coolest, mm-hmm. right? He's just kind of he's cooler than Mahomes. He's just, uh-huh. I think he is, mm-hmm. right? Even though Mahomes is he's my just favorite quarterback, more chill. He's he, more he chill. A, he's called Joe Shiesty, Joe Swag. Like yeah. he's cool, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, and, and and the the funny part is, or the ironic part is, mm-hmm. right? He's from a small town. Yeah. He's from a little dinky town. I think his father was a high school football coach, right? Mm-hmm. He's from a small town. He 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 was a three star recruit. Got to Ohio State, got the Buckeye bump, if you will, because he was no four-star recruit. He was Tom Brady. He was sending out his tapes everywhere. He couldn't Mm -hmm. get an offer. He just has it. Like, and then I'm so interested because seeing Kirk Cousins do his mental test in his car and seeing the way they perform, uh, prepare, I know Joe is crazy when it comes to preparation. He has that Tom Brady thing. That's what the documentary wants, and I think it'll be perfect for him to be on there. Now that we have him and we know the seven that have turned it down, who would you like to see come on the show? And we know Josh Allen's probably not going to do it. They're not doing what? None of the rookies? No, well, that hasn't been said. Yeah, I think they would be down to do the rookies. But th- these are just the people who have turned it down. Well, how about Geno Smith? Oh, that would be perfect. I think that would be – it would have been great time last year. But this year, after having a year of success, how do you take that success? So you, I mean, if you want – if we're if – we're, Putting them into categories, right? Mm-hmm. Derek Carr would be Kirk Cousins. Yep, 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 yep. I agree. I, I wrote about that when I talked about potentials who should do it. Derek Carr was my Kirk Cousins replacement. Yeah. I, but to your point, I would love to see Geno. I think uh, Kirk Cousins would, I mean, not Kirk Cousins, uh, Derek Carr would be good. Um, I would love one of the rookies. Right. CJ or Bryce. The only problem with it, I think they'd be too shy. Oh, yeah. I think they'd be too rookies? concerned. Mm-hmm. With what they were saying and, and the judging part of it. Brock Purdy? And you get the quarterback controversy with yeah. Lance and Darnold? Are they saying Lance is struggling out there, by they the way? They have, yeah. They said he can't even get the ball across like the 40, like 40 yards on the field. No it's kidding. It's bad, man. I saw the, I saw one of the throws. It, Dave, it wasn't like the dude's hands were right here. It was, and I know people can't see this, but it the ball went at least a couple feet over his head. Mm. Like, it looked bad. Let me see if I can find that video and show you because... It's not looking good for Trey Lance, and I don't Is know. Is Dak struggling as well? Um, I haven't heard that. Okay. But I haven't been right. too tapped into... Uh, I, I thought I saw Dan Orlovsky say something, and then one of the Cowboy Beat guys said, maybe Dan should come out here and check it out. So I, I, I cannot confirm that. Okay. Well, yeah, apparently... Uh, so Burrow's a good one. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're already giving me... All right, so let's figure out a not a good one. Okay, so we want not a good one. Um, you said Stafford's not doing it. Yeah, Stafford's not. Stafford said, hell no. <laughs> I think Herbert would be boring. Yeah, Herbert. I think Lawrence would be boring too. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Let's see. I'm going to do NFL team so we can go through. I don't think so. I think her. I, th- I think that would be a good one. I think Lawrence would be a good one. Okay. I don't think he's boring. So look, I got, the, I got all the teams here. We can go through. No, I don't want any part of Kyler. Yeah, no part of Kyler. Lamar turned it down. There's no point going back to Atlanta for... Oh, right. That'd be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Buffalo turned it down. Bryce. He hasn't turned it down. Oh, yeah, he hasn't. He's indifferent He's going right to turn it down, he's but gonna, he hasn't. Yeah, he hasn't. He will yet. turn it down, yeah. Uh, Bryce, would you want that? I would love Bryce. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yep. Okay, we got Joe. No right. fields. Watson no, is staying far no. away from television. Don't want any part. Yeah, I don't, I don't want any part of that either. <laughs> right? Did you see him? He's still... He's blaming the media. Mm-hmm. He blames the media he for this issue. He hasn't taken responsibility. At all. He, th- he thinks he's, he was wronged he's by... He's the victim. Yeah, he does, which is blasphemous to Unreal. me. Unreal. Yeah. yeah. Broncos, Russell, I don't think Sean Payton's going to let that fly. That would be... No. <laughs> no. That would be cookie cutter, and he would be... That would be... Yes. We would, he would... He would try to script it. <laughs> he would get more lambasted than he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because everybody... We'll call him fake. That's it. Yeah. He just feels so fake. He does. He really does. It feels like, for example, I've been watching The Bachelorette. There's a guy on there. Everything he says comes from a Bachelorette podcast trying to oh, move awesome. on. He's that's just funny. He's scripted, and he's trying to be the next Bachelor, and he's doing everything well, obviously that... it's working if he's still going on. He's still on there, yeah, but... So hold on. This guy's doing the analytics of The Bachelorette? Essentially. That's a good move on his part. Why are we criticizing him? <laughs> because that's fake, Dave. He's not being himself. He's... You got to get to the end. Well, that's what Russell Wilson would be in quarterback. <laughs> he's just trying to get to the end. <laughs> the... If he's doing... So what, what, what are these Bachelorette... Like, analytics. So basically, he's just saying he's he has gone through old seasons and right. looked at 
phrases that are hot keys that, nice. that women love. So on how the do show. you know this? He, because, he, he because, said it? No, because me and my uh, co-host oh. uh, have watched uh, at least the past four seasons okay. of our pod. And right. we legitimately have heard words that uh, he said and uh, went uh, back uh, and uh, looked uh, oh, okay. at other seasons and bar for bar, word for word no kidding. from guys that people like. And guys that people didn't so like. So are you putting this out on the internet or are you just oh, telling yeah. no, me? No, 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 no. We put it on our podcast today. Oh, like, okay. We, we literally right. just dropped it and we're, we're, we're making that claim. I'm going to put the clips out. Like, And other people have said this too. Okay. Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. No, right. it's a big thing. Um, Detroit, I think golf would be good. No. You don't think so? No, we've done that before. Oh, we did Hard Knocks. Yeah, he was that. on Hard Knocks. True. We did Hard Knocks. We said CJ, we would like him. Yeah, that would be bad. Jordan Love. Watch the train yeah. wreck. <laughs> yeah. Right? That would be good. Yeah. I would enjoy Let's it. Let's see that. You know, mm-hmm. taking over for a legend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anthony Richardson? No. No. Okay. No Rams. Uh, you said you would like Trevor. I think Trevor would be good. Okay. Okay. Right. He just seems cookie cutter to me, but maybe that'll give me a I chance to like. I don't think he's like, cookie cutter. Because, like, I didn't like Kirk Cousins before his season, and I've grown to like him. Uh, right. So, right. Th- that's what this does. Okay. Uh, Derek Carr, I, I do think he should I think do so. it. I think so, yep. Um, the Raiders. Mm, who is their quarterback? Oh, Jimmy G? Jimmy G. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it would be funny. Especially if he was having dinner with women. That- <laughs> yeah, w- <laughs> women in the industry. Let's just say that. <laughs> Daniel Jones? Um, see, I think that would be cookie cutter. Gotcha. I think that would be cliche. I think he would be paranoid to say the wrong the thing. Wrong, yeah, because yeah. he has a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. Like you said, Herbert, he's just a quiet guy. That's just correct. not his style. No. We both have two and Jalen turned down. I think they need to get a quarterback from Purdy, San Fran. Purdy would be great. Yeah. I think Purdy would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about your guy, Mac Jones? No, I think it'd be boring. Gotcha. We already agreed on Gino. Gino would be good. Rodgers hasn't said no. He hasn't said no yet. But he's doing hard knocks, so I don't know if that that uh, you know, is competing. Well, no, because hard knocks generally is the whole team and yeah, finishes at training camp. Correct. So he could. I don't know if he's going to let hard knocks into him personally. So then I'm trying to get my niece uh, on it because um, Sauce Gardner is going back to Cincinnati. I think this weekend oh, to graduate. Okay. So yeah, he's getting can, his degree, and my niece goes to Cincinnati. Oh, so you'll be so. able to see. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, I would love to see Rodgers in it because I think that'd be a good insight into him. Tampa Bay. I don't need any more insight, Darren Rodgers. Oh, I've had you enough done. Insight. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm. Baker better not let the TV come to him. You know, though that would be funny. Oh, it would be entertaining for sure because because I don't think he would be careful and say no. What he, say. he would say whatever he wanted. That would be outstanding because he knows he's hanging on by a by thread. thread yep. He may not care. Mm-hmm. He just, I think that would be, that's not a bad idea. That's the Mariota? If you got, no. no that's it, a different it, character. Okay. That's, it doesn't, gotcha. That doesn't match. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. If you got, I think Joe Burrow and Baker Mayfield would be the two opposite ends of the, the spectrum. spectrum. Mm. I think that would be awesome. And Geno Smith in the middle. That would be, yeah, that'd be yes. good TV. Yes. That'd be good that TV. That would be outstanding. Also, yes. I would like Kenny Pickett. Nah. I, I, I would love to learn about that guy. Because there's something going on in Pittsburgh. Like, people think they're going to be good this year. And I want to see why. They're always never. They're never bad because of the coach. Yeah, well, yeah. Tomlin's the man. Right. Um, And then Tannehill. Mm. No. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm knowing that no, one as well. No. Sam Howell would be good as well, though. I so. agree. Yeah. I'd love to see, see Baker Mayfield. I think and I'm not even it. a big Baker Mayfield fan, but I think the TV. he would not give a damn. Yeah. That's what I think. I think we found our three. Joe, top tier, yep. mid, Gino, bottom, bake. If you're looking at it that way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure there's that big a difference between Baker Mayfield and Geno Smith. Well, but Gino wins. <laughs> well, he did last yeah, year. He did he last did. year. He hadn't been playing quarterback or you can in the NFL for a Gino long time. for Derek Carr if you want. I think Gino's a better story. True. That's true. Well, Derek Carr, redemption with the Saints, you know. But that's just playing better. Yeah. Gino hadn't played. True. At that's all. That's true. That is true. Yeah, we're, we found it. He that's was a the, backup quarterback forever. That's the best TV. And, played, and was playing really what led his team to the playoffs. Yep. Yes, he did. Yeah, you're right. Gino has to beat Gino Joe Bake. Yeah. Yeah, that's the squad. <laughs> Interesting, man. I hope, I hope that happens. Well, should we? T- uh, do you have Eli Manning's number? Can we? Look, uh, who we do we get? tweet at him? Who do we tweet at him from the station? Yeah. Look, Peyton, this is, we found the right, three. We got your three. Yeah. Yeah. This is what yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who says no? I don't think Gino says no, and I right. definitely don't think Baker Mayfield says no. 
But they got to do this soon. Yeah, they got to decide. Is the, idea, is the idea of doing this now? The idea is you have to decide before the preseason ends. So you can be ready for game. Because it didn't do any training camp stuff. Like, very minimal. Like, maybe like a couple minutes to start. But it started with week one. Oh, it did start yeah, with week one. Yeah, it started one. with week All one. Right. Yeah, so they got to be ready by week one. That's why Josh Allen still has time to decide. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, he sounds like he decided. He, uh, he definitely did. <laughs> I don't want any distractions. I'm not calling it. A, see, that's the problem with Josh Allen. <laughs> I, don't want a, I don't want any distractions for our team, but I'm not calling it a distraction. So all of a sudden in his head, he's like, well, I just called it a distraction, mm-hmm. but I don't want it to be a distraction. It's a distraction. Yeah, get, yeah, out, get out of here. <laughs> I don't know how much of a distraction. I guess being in your personal life it is. Right, it I mean, wasn't a distraction for Baker or Kirk. I mean, not Baker, uh, for uh, Patrick or Kirk. Right, Kirk did well with it. Yeah, it did he? Did well, he won a bunch of close games. Yeah, he no, did. No, mm-hmm. no, no, no. So we shall see. All right, let's take a timeout. We'll put a bow on it. I made sure not to play working on the weekend. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We know you're busy and can't always listen to Sports Chat when it's airing live on the radio, but now Sports Chat is on demand. Download your favorite podcast, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, even maybe iHeart. Then search for Sports Chat. You'll find Sports Chat with Dave Schultz. To make it even easier, you can subscribe to the latest Sports Chat with Dave Schultz podcast, and you'll know when the episode is available. All right, we put a bow on it. I think the Pac-12 is still intact still as intact. of right now without Colorado. We'll see what happens when we come back. Maybe all done by tomorrow. 1033 the goat Now now your ideas don't have to wait now they have everything they need to come to life Dell Technologies and Intel are creating technology that loves ideas loves expanding your business evolving your passions We push what technology can do so great ideas can happen right now Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. These Acadiana businesses proudly support the broadcast of UL Raging Cajun Athletics on 103.3 and 1420 The Goat. News Talk 96.5 KPL, Classic Rock 105.1 and Hot 107.9. Our Small Red and Marilla. M&D Industries. Jeremy Flooring. Fisher Early Childhood Development Center. And the Rustic Renegade. Support these businesses that support the Raging Cajuns game broadcast of football, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and softball. Bring all the action into your home, car, smart speaker, on your phone, or wherever you work all year long. And if you'd like to learn more about becoming a UL booster, it's easy to join the winning team. Support the broadcast of UL Raging Cajun Athletics by becoming a UL broadcast booster. Just contact Mary Gallion by calling 337 23 6,000. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At 4 in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for a free military veterans guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. My son Finn was born with congenital heart disease, causing him to spend the first eight months of his life in the hospital. During that time, he endured 10 surgeries, including an open heart surgery. Starlight Children's Foundation has played an important role in my family's life. For five weeks when he was a baby, Finn lived in a Starlight Hero wagon. You could not understand the pure joy of having him go from a hospital bed into his favorite red wagon, especially when he was so little. The support that Starlight provides to families like mine is an integral part of creating happiness at a time when there's very little to be found. Learn more about how the Starlight Children's Foundation brightens the lives of sick kids by visiting starlight.org today. I'm Shanola Hampton. I support the Feeding America network of food banks because they help provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. 
Ernie Johnson and Charles Barkley welcoming you back to Susan's Cubicle here in Accounts Payable. What an afternoon of non-stop bookkeeping action, Charles. Are you kidding me? She set herself a reminder to get out of that chair and move. That's a smart use of a timeout. She's somehow still reading her emails while getting her heart rate up and moving her muscles. Healthy habits that could lower your risk of cancer. Uh-oh, it's Karen from the IT department. This is a wrinkle no one saw coming. She means well, but she just derailed the yoga class down in accounts receivable. There she goes to one of her usual distractions. But Susan just tosses her a no-look way. That's a crazy move. Let's watch that again. She's stretching, and there's the effortless side wave. Susan putting on a clinic. Susan from Accounts Payable, dominating. Just get moving. It helps in the prevention of so many cancers. Stand up to cancer and Optum want to help you reduce your risk for cancer. Visit TakeAHealthyStand.org. What is dedication? The thing that drives me every day as a dad is Dariana. We call him Day Day for short. Every day he's hungry for something, whether it's attention, affection, knowledge. And there's this huge responsibility in making sure that when he's no longer under my wing, that he's a good person. I want him to be able to sit back one day and go, we worked together, we did a good job. That's dedication. Find out more at fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. Someone gets your goat. There's plenty to go around for everyone. 1033 The Goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. All right, Dave Schultz, Lynn and Burton. I got a feeling we're going to be doing the same exact show tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Waiting for that Pac-12. Story, yeah, stories are out there. Um, I mean, the Arizona State Board is meeting. That's for, we're not talking about the state, I guess. We're talking about the university in this case. Whether uh, the Sun Devils are moving to the Big 12 with Arizona. And does that... Domino make Oregon and Washington move to uh, the Big 12 or to the Big 10. And does Cal or Stanford then follow teams into what direction? Um, I still don't think FSU can get out of it. And I'm not thinking. I am thinking this. Unless Florida State is clear and free, I don't think they're going to be able to get a get a conference mm. because they're not going to, if they get sued, then there's a stay and you got to go through the process. You know, do they move conferences while they're in a lawsuit? I, I doubt it. And I don't think any conference wants to deal with that. True. So Texas and Oklahoma ponied up to get out of the big 12 and it took them two years. Colorado doesn't seem to have that issue with the PAC 12. And I think Florida State. I think Florida State has issues getting out of the ACC. I don't. I don't, are they no, do I, don't that? I don't see that happening. There are reports that Notre Dame is not going anywhere. They're oh. not. They're not doing anything. I they, mean, if you're Notre Dame, you have your basically freedom of, you know, they could lose a game, but they could still make it into the playoff. They have the freedom of not being attached to anyone, and I think that benefits them to stay out personally, um, if they want to, you know, keep making playoffs and keep having mediocrity and still getting success from it. Right. Like, as bad as that sounds, you know, it's like they use it to their benefit. Yeah. It's going to be crazy on how on how all this comes down. And, and it, mm-hmm. it is so funny. I'm sure some reporter is going to talk to these guys. Do you guys feel foolish <laughs> creaming all the players that want a little bit of the pie and all of a sudden you guys need, you know, $30 million and is enough from the TV deal. You need 50 and $60 million. Mm-hmm. Right. Isn't that what we heard? Right. Well, you're going to have, you know, problems in the, in the locker room. If you know, the quarterback's making a million dollars and the backup guard is only getting five grand, you know, you're going to have problems the in the locker room. Mm-hmm. It doesn't happen everywhere. Yeah. And then there's, you know, delineation in, in, Salaries in every industry. It doesn't matter what you're doing. That was just an excuse so they could keep doing what they want. Yeah. I, so, you know. And now we got Florida State saying whatever they're getting from the ACC isn't good enough. They need more. <laughs> they said, pay us that bread. Crazy. 
Crazy, crazy, crazy. But I, my thing is, what's going to ha- Like, I feel bad for the other sports. Like, the sports that aren't football. Yeah, that's a sport. Yeah. Like, right. the track right. people, the swimming, the tennis. Right. Like, they're the ones getting hosed by this. The travel for them is brutal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, imagine if you have to run cross country or something in the morning, and you're right. coming from California, and you got to get to, what, Maryland? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Well, that's why I think, I think you know, when USC... You know, usually teams leave on a Friday, mm-hmm. right? And play on Saturday. Yep. No, you're right. And usually it's all in the same time zone. Maybe you're switching one time zone. You know, the Big Ten's in two time zones. But you're, you know, it's only an hour. USC's going to be going across three. They're going to leave on a... Th- they're either yeah, leaving first thing... On, they're either, either leaving first thing Friday morning... Or Thursday. Or Thursday. And that's going to... Uh, look, football players... Then, you know, academics, they, they, we can be honest, they fudge them a little bit, but like, you're not about to fudge your track players, a- academics. They're the people that's going to suffer. The track, the swimming, the tennis, the golf, with, with that leaving that extra day. Yeah. And they're, they're talking about doing, you know, reg, uh, you know, regular airlines for some of these guys. Making them ride coach. Eesh. Well, that's uh, not gonna be football. Yeah, yeah no, but, not, but, not football. But, but I mean, mm-hmm. people. I, I tried to get somebody on today. They got a a, a travel delay. Oh. Some of these times, you're you know, some of these places get getting a delay for mm-hmm. two or three days, and all of a sudden you missed a week of school. Yeah, <laughs> Jeez, right? man. I'm thinking of like Utah because like ve- like in the Vegas airport is always having delays. Right. Like if you're right. somewhere around there, you're in trouble. No. All right. Not sure this is the song to end the show yeah, with. But yeah, you're right. I realize <laughs> This should that. be the song to start to start, the show yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks to Jeff Cameron talking Florida State. Seth Lewis, KATC. Alan Blondin, My Hoary News talking Coastal Carolina. Uh, Julian Council locked on Panthers. Uh, and Zach Globner from WDAE. Thanks to Linda Burton for doing a bang-up job. The effort is always appreciated. Uh, we've had Locked On, Sunbelt Part 1. And Part 2 will come out tomorrow with more of... Uh, uh, Mike Desimo, the Raging Cajuns head coach. Keep it tuned in to 103.3 The Goat. Pardon us what we butt in with a little common sense. 103.3 The Goat, the greatest sports talk of all time. Martini's 2023 Lafayette's Absolute Best Martini Competition and Teeny Tour to benefit Healing House, Hope for Grieving Children is in full swing. This year, enjoy signature martinis at eight local restaurants through August 15th. Enjoy a different restaurant's martini for $2 with the purchase of any entree of their featured Teeny Tuesday. Participating restaurants include Bonton Grill, Bonefish Grill, Bezos, Mercy Kitchen, Chops Mid-City Smokehouse, Tsunami, Vestal, and Walk-Ons. Purchase martinis a la maison package and receive two hand-painted martini glasses, a signed print by this year's glass artist, Candace Greer, and access to exciting online silent auction items. Visit Healing house.org for more information. Join us this Tuesday at Mercy Kitchen to try their absolute Judy Dreams Martini. Martini's 2023, presented by Town Square Media, Moss Motors, Bourbon Royalty Candle Company, Advanced Piping, Linear Controls, Leading Home Care, and Alone Funeral Home. Lafayette Roofing, from the roof to the roots of Acadiana. We know issues with your roof can be intimidating and maybe even expensive, but not if you call Lafayette Roofing. Big or small, we handle it all at a price you can afford. We also offer our standard five-year labor and material Materials warranty. Lafayette Roofing takes pride in being in the heart of Acadiana and the official roofing company of your Rage and Cajuns. So if you need a roof, who else would you call? Call Lafayette Roofing. Our name says it all. 237 Roof. That's 237 7663. One in four car batteries is weak and needs to be replaced. Let our professional parts people test your battery for free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hi, I'm Connie Britton, and I want to share with you the experience of Donna in Washington. She writes, I got injured about five years ago. I was let go when, because of the injury, I couldn't keep up with my schedule. I've tried to find other work, but I'm 68 now. 
No one wants to hire someone that old. This week is tough, though, because I had to get my tooth fixed. So I only have $10 in my checking account. But it will be okay. I at least have food because of this pantry. Millions of people face hunger. Some every day, just like Donna. The Feeding America network of food banks helps provide over 6 billion meals to people in need each year. Learn more at feedingamerica.org. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong.